adaptive immune system and have very specific functions. However, in order to complete those functions, it must be fully activated. Once the T cells have encountered a signal through an antigen-presenting cell, or APC, it signals B cells to set out and find the pathogen that is causing the infection. In this case, we will go through the process of B cell function and activation for an extracellular pathogen. First, when the B cell encounters a pathogen, it uses a B cell receptor, or BCR, to bind to an antigen on the surface of the pathogen. Once the BCR and the antigen on the surface of the extracellular pathogen bind, the B cell endocytoses the pathogen. The B cell then proceeds to chop up the pathogen into peptides which bind with MHC class II molecules. This complex of antigen and MHC class II is then put onto the surface of the cell. The B cell then travels back to secondary immune tissues like the lymph nodes or pancreas where it reacts with healthy T cells. The MHC binds to the T cell receptor and the CD4 co-receptor, which interact together to recognize the B cell as presenting an MHC class II molecule with a peptide on it. Then the CD4 ligand on the T cell and the CD4 receptor on the B cell bind. This interaction provides the B cell with confirmation that the T cell has already encountered a pathogen and that this pathogen is something they should attack. The T cell tells this to the B cell by releasing IL-4 along with other cytokines. Specifically, IL-4 binds to the receptor on the B cell and tells it to begin making antibodies to neutralize the pathogen. This results in the full activation of the B cell. The activated B cell either travels to the tissues or remains in the lymph and blood and begins to make IgM antibodies. IgM antibodies are the least specific of antibodies and are the first to be made in response to infection. As the infection progresses, however, the antibodies and the BCRs become better equipped to fight the pathogen. During this process, activation-induced cytidine deamase, or AID, helps produce these better antibodies. This is known as icing activation. The only part that changes during this process is the constant region of the antibody and BCR, which allow for better binding to the specific pathogen. In this example, the antibodies are switched from IgM to IgG. This is because IgG antibodies are more effective at dealing with extracellular pathogens, such as the pathogen shown in the beginning of this video. As the B cell continues to produce antibodies, the quality of the antibodies also improves through somatic hybridization. Once the B cell has been activated, it re begins replicating and making more B cells that can continue to produce antibodies for this specific infection. Because there is rapid reproduction, AID aids in the mutation rate in the variable regions of the antibodies and the BCRs. The antibodies that respond to the infection the best by binding tied with the pathogen are selected to replicate more often via clonal selection. The result for future generations is a BCR and the production of antibodies that are better adapted to fight the specific pathogen. This allows the adaptive immune system to take control and better fight off the infection. B cells that produce the best BCRs and antibodies and are the most effective at doing this eventually become fully differentiated plasma cells. Plasma cells are cells whose only function is to produce supreme antibodies. They continue to pump out antibodies until the threat has been eliminated. This ends the overall function and activation of the cell.